Hello everybody, here we are for Lab 4. Lab 4 is Hydra's head, so let's get it started. Good, great, grand, wonderful, trick of the day. Alright, for this lab we're going to be doing some uh, Windows Registry Forensics. Uh, for this we will be using Eric Zimmerman's Registry Explorer. There are many tools that we could use to do this. I believe that even Autopsy has a plugin for it. Uh, but I really like Eric Zimmerman's tools. Uh, he has a GitHub out there with a bunch of forensic tools on it. Um, so if you don't know them, go check them out. They're really great. And I really like Registry Explorer as a dedicated uh, registry forensic tool. Um, and it's free. So few things these days are free. Everybody's trying to get their... I mean, everyone's got to make their money, right? I mean, we live in the gig economy. Everyone's trying to monetize their hobbies and stuff. But uh, it's kind of the opposite of what I feel we should be doing as a society. So to see something that's made available out there, something that's good, that works really well, and uh, isn't uh, paywalled is... Uh, and, Increasingly rare and wonderful sight. So uh, here we have uh, lab four user dot. Oh, hold on a second. I'm sorry, we skipped the scenario there, didn't we? All right, lab four is Hydra's heads. This scenario takes place circa 2012. Three months ago, Tandy Miller disappeared from his post at Shield. However, Nick Fury has reason to believe that Tandy has been using a generic account, Vibranium, to access confidential proprietary data after his disappearance. They already have evidence that points to him using the account, but they need to confirm he has accessed the sensitive data. Use the provided entuser.dat file to examine the user's registry hive to answer the following questions and... Uh, right off the bat, I want to say, your objective, students, students, your objective is to produce a competent forensic report in your examination of the evidence. Use the same report, the template, do the same thing we did in labs one and two. I will not be doing that in this video. We've already gone through two of them, and... You should, at this point, know what is expected of a competent forensic report. So, while I, in this video, will not be following out, uh, filling out a forensic report, you must submit a forensic report for this lab. Okay? Just want to be clear, you're not going to see me do it. I'm not going to be writing down the answers. Well, not the, I'm not going to be writing down the forensic report. I will be writing down the answers in this video. So, you're not going to get a forensic report out of me in this one, but I am going to fire up Notepad here. And we are going to be answering the questions in this video. All right. Let's throw, let's throw this over here on this side. Huh? All right. So don't forget the forensic report. That is what your grade is based on. You will get a zero if you submit just the answers to these questions. All right. I feel like I've said it three times. It should be enough. Uh, document your investigation fully. In each response, be sure to include the hive in which you found your answer. In your report, answer the following questions. So, what is the fifth most recent keyword vibranium searched for? That's our first question. Let's get our into user.dat file, and we'll just drag and drop that here into Registry Explorer. This is version 2, by the way. 2000. Uh, that I'm using here. So in Registry Explorer, we can see that there is, uh, in the Windows Registry, there is a recycle bin of sorts. It's more like a tombstone type process, as we see in Active Directory, but these are deleted keys right here. Uh, it's not unusual to find uh, tons of deleted keys, right? Because registry keys are changed all the time. Installation, upgrades, um, uninstalls, and all that kind of stuff will delete keys. But of course, it's also not unusual to see them, you know, in the event that uh, someone is attempting to obfuscate, you know, maybe a, a malware or something. You'll see something like that here. Uh, here's uh, associated deleted records. We have a hive that goes all the way down here. Software, Microsoft, cryptography, blah, 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 all the way down here to domain controller authentication. That was a key that was deleted. Um, but let's expand out our remaining keys. And this is an NT, uh, this is a, an H key current user hive for the Vibranium user account. Okay. Uh, one of the things I like about Registry Explorer is that it has bookmarks. And if you go up here to the top under bookmarks, let me make sure you can see this in OBS. 
Sometimes I, uh, I record it with an overlay and you can't see any of the context menus, but yeah, you can see that. All right. Uh, so there's a jump list here um, for uh, bookmarks. And this is right right out of the package. You, you uh, unzip and run Registry Explorer. You'll see this, by the way, if you don't see these, um, uh, these uh, plugins here, these bookmarks are, are these, sorry, hold on a sec. These bookmarks you may be able to see, but Registry Explorer also comes with plugins that we're going to look at in a moment. Those plugins are DLLs. And if you download the zip archive from Eric Zimmerman's GitHub and then you extract it with Windows Native Zip Handler, it may block those DLLs uh, because they're unsigned. Um, which means you're not going to have the plugins. You may not have plugins. I, I can't remember if the bookmarks are part of that, but you, you either won't have, you won't, you definitely won't have the plugins. But you may not also have bookmarks. If you do um, extract those DLLs with another archive handler like 7-Zip or something, 7-Zip will extract it no problem at all. All right, so make sure that those are in the in the directory before you get started. All right, so our first question again, what is the fifth most recent keyword Vibranium searched for? Okay, so for that, we're going to need to poke around a little bit here, right? Uh, we have some indication of what the, the hives are going to. Here we have a word wheel query that's user searches. So anytime someone searches uh, the native Windows search function, it's kept in that registry hive. User assist recently accessed items. I keep forgetting the most recent keyword Vibranium searched for. All right, so that's what we're looking for here is word wheel query for user searches. All right, and I'm going to switch to this tab real quick. So forget you just saw that. So if you don't have the plugins installed, this is what you're going to see. And this is actually the raw value in the Windows registry. You can see that this uh, key down here, if we follow our breadcrumbs, is under Software, Microsoft, Windows, Current Version, Explorer, Word Wheel Query down here at the bottom. All right. So when you get, <clears throat> when you get into... Um, the Windows registry, if we were looking at it through the native uh, regedit viewer, uh, or if we don't have a plugin, this is what you're going to see. We have an MRU list X, and we have some values here, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, so there are six items in this list. Uh, we have a data stream here represented by hexadecimal. Uh, here is our list X data. And here is our uh, number 0 data. You can see here it says adamantium. Number two, Myron McLean, accounts, vibranium, test plan, and one. All right, or sorry, alloy for one. All right, so now you may assume, okay, well, if we're looking for the fifth item, you might say number five. Obviously, that would be wrong because there is a zero, arrays begin at zero, so five is six. But even that wouldn't be correct. And that's because the number assigned in the list uh, is not necessarily the order in which things were searched for, right? If we look at the MRU list X, we can see uh, that we have those numbers listed 1, 5, 4, 3, 2, 0, right? So that's not in order. Uh, so what is the order? Well, if we go to Word Wheel Query, we have a little bit of a cheat here for us because uh, we have, here's their MRU positions, and here's the search terms already parsed for us, so we don't have to do any translating in our heads here. Uh, and here we have our last write timestamp. So if we look for the MRU list X, if we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right, we could do it that way, but is this the last thing that was searched for uh or is this the first thing that was searched for so is this the first second third fourth fifth sixth or is this uh first second third fourth fifth sixth so it's either number five or number two right um so uh how do we know i'm gonna go back to the regular view here uh so that we're not using the the plugin in this case the plugin is uh, not giving us any additional information anyway uh all right so the question is is what is the order of our our search is it is it first in uh is it I'm sorry is the the first number we see the last thing that was searched for or the first that is the question well in this case for word we are we're sorry word wheel query um it is 
the uh, first search term will be last in the list. So one is actually the most recent search. So if we want to see which one was searched fifth, then we have to count backwards here. So zero was one, two, three, four, five. In this case, five is the fifth uh, search term. Um, No, hold, on, hold on a second. Hold on a second. I realized I made a mistake. The wording of the question has me confused. I'm having to have to reevaluate this. What is the fifth most recent keyword? The fifth most recent, not the fifth searched term. So this is the most recent. So this is the first, second, third, fourth, fifth most recent. So it's Myron McLean. Uh, you know what? I'm going to change this question anyway. Uh, the, the wording is all screwed up. What is the... I'm just going to go, what is the most recent keyword searched for? All right, we're just going to go with that. And that means uh, it's alloy. There. Avoid confusion where possible. Make it a little bit easier. Easier for me, easier for everybody else. Export key... Copy, key path. <clears throat> uh, we only need this. All right. Well, it has asked us the uh, assignment asks us to make sure that we include the hive in which you found your answer. So we have to have the path to that hive word real query right there. That makes it easier for me in grading because if I see you have some weird uh, answer. It's like, where the hell did you even see that? All right. Now, uh, next question. What is the most recent typed URL? So let's go up to bookmarks common. All right. Uh, typed URLs right here. URLs entered by a user. Okay. And uh, I'm, once again, I'll go here to the values. We have two. One of them is go Microsoft forward link, blah, blah, blah. That's a start page. If you uh, remember the old days of the go.microsoft.com. And then we have this address here, which is an IP that was uh, entered in um, later on. Um, so uh, this would be our most recent we have URL one, URL two. Again, there's no uh, MRU list here. Um, but uh, same applies URL 1, URL 2, URL 1 is the most recent. Um, how can we tell if there's no MRU list? Well, if we go to our, um, uh, if we go to our, let's go to URL 2 here, for example. We can see here is the URL in plain text, but here is the raw value. If we go to URL 1, we can see that part of this raw value from about where uh, in this slack space so registry keys have slack space just like there's file slack or well there's slack all over the place on computer systems because discrete amounts of uh, reserved space are kind of necessary for computing to function smoothly in uh, just about every system I can think of off the top of my head so we can see that there's something in the Slack space, but there is no Slack space for our URL2, just OO. And if we take a look here at the Slack space, 7706C, if we look through here, 77006C, blah, blah, blah. So this is in the Slack space for URL1, meaning that this had to exist before URL1, otherwise there wouldn't be anything in the Slack space. And if we go to the plugin here, the typed URLs plugin, it's a little bit easier to see. You can even see the if we translate that hexadecimal over to, to ASCII characters for the URL, that literally in the Slack space for this uh, 19973 address, um, we, can we can see part of the URL that was in here for the gomicrosoft.com. So this had to be first, this has to be second, or there wouldn't be anything in that Slack space. So we know that this is the answer. Copy... Got your name down here, throw that in here. Uh, no, that's not what I wanted. Copy. Value data. That's the one I'm looking for. Okay. 
And once again, we need that key. So copy path. Put that in here. Get rid of the extra junk. And there we go. That's our answer. What is the most recently opened file and when was it accessed? What was the most recently opened folder and when was it accessed? What was the most recently opened JPEG file and when was it accessed? Okay, so for this we need to go down and uh, we can go with user assist recently accessed items, but you'll notice that we don't see anything there. It's because we have to expand this out, right? We have several different things here. Uh, if we go to the count key, we actually have two of them. Because this is going to be uh, for different user contexts uh, that are going to be in the same. So a single uh, current user could run under different user contexts. So like the different privilege levels that they're running at. So if we look at the count level here for the second, um, these are link files. Um, pretty much, yeah, exclusively link files now that I see them. Uh, but over here, uh, we have our uh, actual... Uh, applications and so on uh, but this is running programs this is not what we're looking for we're actually looking for recent docs Re recently opened files by extension okay that gives us a whole list and we can see that there's some xls files jpegs and so on if we expand recent docs we get them by extension so jpeg um, and so on here's our directory so the first question is what is the most recently opened file okay so for this, we're going to go back to the values tab. Once again, we're going to look at our MRU list X and the most recently opened one would be number nine, which is right here. Uh, we can it's hop back over here. Uh, value name number nine is right here. That is agents list classified top secret, but we can see that that's not actually a file. That's a directory. The most recently opened file What's uh, OA is 16? No. Yeah. No, it's 10. Um, so number 10 right here is our most recently open file. Our undercover agents list for United Kingdom. Okay, lock that in there. And uh, we don't need to have the, the we'll, we'll use the same key path for these three questions. Um, it's fine. You can just have it all be in recent docs. Okay, most recently open folder we just saw. That's right here. And let's copy this for... All right, we most recently opened JPEG file. So let's go to the JPEGs. Our MRU list X for this says number two was opened most recently. So we can go to number two. And that is HQ. HQ-1. And we can use the same. We don't need to use the JPEG. I'm going to, hold on, let me, get, let me get some breathing room here. Is this? Sorry, give me cancer looking at it. All right, how many times was the program solitaire run? All right, now, now for this, we want to go to the user assist and look here and find... Oh, this is an interesting thing about Windows, by the way. Uh, if we go to the plain view here in values, the values tab, uh, notice that it turns everything into gibberish. That's because Microsoft uses still to this day uses a uh, very sophisticated security measure to obfuscate values in the windows registry known as rote 13 it's a substitution cipher where basically you shift everything forward 13 letters in the alphabet and that's what you get it's diabolical in its implementation all right so here we have uh, solitaire when we have a run counter right uh let's see this is um, identify it. Well, anyway, here th these are the raw values. 
Uh, this is why the plugins are so nice because it parses it for you. It undoes the route 13 and it parses all of the data that's included in the entry. We have a run counter. That's the number of times it's run. The focus count is the number of times that the window has taken focus. So for example, if I have two windows here, I can only have one active window at a time. So Chrome, Notepad, Chrome, Notepad, right? I can see them both, but I can only have one active window at a time. That's window focus. It's how many times it was made active. Uh, the focus time is how, how long it was the active window. And then we have, of course, the last executed. Right. So anyway, our run counter here in this case is uh, how many times was the program solitaire run by this user? Uh, six times last run there. And here's our last executed right here. And we need the key, um, uh, copy key path down here and there, and then we do this, and then we do that. All right. What is the make and model of the printer redirected three hooked to the system? So if we go back to bookmarks, common, uh, printer info right here, printer ports. Um, redirected three, this is a LaserJet 4050. And down here, copy, key path. All right. Given only the information in this ntuser.dat, what are the indications Tandy is behind this? Are there indications he's not? Can we be certain? Uh, well, we've already seen a couple of things that definitely uh, tell us that uh, there was something going on, right? Under the recent docs, we saw that there was undercover lists being. Uh, um, uh, accessed here around this time there was a url that was entered around this time um where else uh that goes to um an ip address that we don't know uh it also has the uh the specified port of uh of port 53 um which is a uh, I mean, that's the default port for DNS, but can be used as a, a listener for, for exfiltration. Um, so there's that. What else could we possibly see here? Let's see. Um, history domain controller name. Um, current version windows. Um, run once. We got no run once. No, there's no malware in there. Run key. It's just the sidebar. Um, oh, right. That's, that's, uh, that's a note for me. I need to put, uh, this is a note for myself. I need to put a, um, time when Tandy was supposed to have been, uh, was supposed to have disappeared from his post, um, so that we can use these dates as part of our information for, um, For the scenario, um, there we go. Mounted devices. I think this is what I was looking for. Uh, no, apparently not. I think I might be getting it confused with another scenario. I think so. Where's our Windows host name? FTP. No. So many of these scenarios it's hard to remember which and what. Um, all right. So given only the information in this end user what are the indications Tandy is behind this? Are there indications he is not? Can we be certain? Okay, so I note for myself when I add the date, this will be I'm just gonna act as if I did add the date. Um Access of sensitive data occurred after Tandy disappeared from his posts. Um, many sensitive documents were accessed, as well as a suspect IP 
potentially use for exfiltration. Um, let's go back to our um, that's not, not that one. Um, was it uh, was it in here? Right. And sort by last executed. All right. So we, we can see that the last thing that was executed here was uh, command. Um, Um, no, let's leave it at that. Let's leave it at that. I don't want to get into speculation. We we were, we weren't prompted to speculate in this assignment. So, um, I mean, chances are something was going on there, but let's leave it at that. All right. So let's call that that. All right. So that's it for the questions. All right. I gave you some help with that one. Forensic report is up to you. So the question is then, what are you being expected to do out of a forensic report where you, you're being expected to provide one just as we did in lab one and two? Um, you're not uh, analyzing disk evidence, but you are going to analyze this registry key. I only went through the questions. So I went through the bookmarks um, and gave you the answers to the questions, but I still need a forensic report for the examination of this. I didn't show you everything in this video. All right. I, I wanted to make sure that there was still enough meat on the bone to do your forensic report. So that's what you should be expected to do. Uh, you know, hopefully you've done that before you've watched this. If you haven't, then that's fine. Go back and do that because that is what you're being graded on. I don't care if you submit all eight of these questions and they're all correct. This isn't, this is only part of the assignment. Let's put it that way. It's not even the most important part of the assignment. I don't care if you're right. We need a competent forensic report, as it says in the lab doc. Okay. All right, so uh, that is, uh, oh, and by the way, uh, I part of the reason why I decided to record these is to make sure that the uh, labs are not onerous in the amount of time it would take to complete them, since we spend about an hour doing them in class, and I've been recording them. They've been about an hour and a half each, which is perfect, um, because, of course, we go through them faster in class. I expect... You to be, I, I generally my rule of thumb is if it takes me an hour and a half, I should expect students it will take about twice as long, so about three hours or so, uh, which which sounds about right to me. This one is meant to be short. Um, if I were to do the forensic report on top of this, um, I'm at about a half hour right now. I think it would take me about a half an hour to do the report, so about two hours in this case. So let's uh, save this and uh, I will. See you on the next one. Uh, we're going to be doing Lab 5 next.